All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Monster Candy Podcast. I'm here. My name is Dominic Davi. You might know me from the band Tsunami Bomb. I'm here with my co-host with the most. That's uh, a really good way to rhyme that. It was Screaming <laughs> E from the Memphis Murder Men. Yeah. <laughs> and as he did sing, we have a special guest host on this episode, my bandmate from Tsunami Bomb and horror fan extraordinaire. Ooh, extraordinaire. Extraordinaire, <laughs> Oubliette Sparks. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and I it's mean, such a fun name to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're doing great. It's I'm appreciating the intro. That's good. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't just that's sing exact, anybody in. That's exactly really? oh, what good. The Tsunami Bomb needs is a sweet <laughs> oubliette backup singer to just <laughs> say, <laughs> say my name. <laughs> or, or, or your own personal announcer to come on the stage. Yeah, this I mean, guy. I'm I'm okay with that. I already have my own handler, so an announcer is just right? really the next natural progression in, <laughs> in my performance hey, art, you know? Our tour manager can't be your own handler all the time. <laughs> That's what he is. What do you mean, tour manager? <laughs> if you're talking about my handler, <laughs> he's, he's not... A tour manager. Oh, He's, Charlie. I guess he handles everybody, but yeah, he does handle you. Handles you. Gets whoa, you where or, you need to be. You know, perhaps perhaps I handle him. Chica, and that's the secret. Bow, bow, bow. You, you know, <laughs> you know what actually... You, it's not that kind of handling. No, it's definitely not that kind of handling. <laughs> <laughs> You know what actually would be funny though is we already have one host. As everyone can probably tell, Shotzi Blackheart is not here. She's busy kicking ass over at WWE NXT as usual. But you know, we already have one co-host. When she shows up, like she has a big intro with music and fire and all sorts of bullshit. Yeah, fire, fire, fire. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's how <laughs> we should introduce it. you on stage with Tsunami Mom. Like as we start, it's like. And then we could have E's voice like, ooh, yeah. Yeah, and then pyrotechnics shooting out all around my keyboard. <laughs> and I just kind of manifest after the fire goes down. Yeah, all right? the clubs will really love fire. <laughs> <laughs> They're real big. The, kind. I mean, the kindling of ideas I have, just mm -hmm. see, see, I just set the whole shit on fire. Yeah, we'll talk. I say do we'll it. Talk. I say like do it, guys. Okay. Right? I'm Maybe. open. Maybe E should be our handler or your handler. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. would, that, that would not be a good idea. That defeats the whole purpose of a handler. <laughs> <laughs> he just introduced uh, you into every club. It's like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, if, if Doyle got to walk into the park side with a dude with a flashlight shining down at the floor to make sure the coast is clear, I think you deserve a fucking announcer. Are you serious? Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. I, oh, I uh, yeah. 100%. Deserve, deserve an announcer. I mean, do you know how hard I work to do what I do? It's crazy. Like, I do. An announcer. I do. Obviously, that's the next step. So, hardest cool. working yeah. keyboard player, co vocalist in the business. Yeah. Yeah. I exactly. practice a lot and work <laughs> very hard. <laughs> For people who don't know uh, about the thing with Doyle getting a flashlight to guide him into the stage at the Parkside in San Francisco, the Parkside, which is a great venue, 
has a stage that is literally like what one foot off the ground it's like and in one <laughs> corner of the bar area i mean it's an awesome club i'm not throwing shade but i mean the only thing that he would need a flashlight for is a basically a regular step like it's a stair that's yeah, it i, I think there's a little bar a little an actual like i think there's actual bars that are like kind of a a they're like ankle high to stop Wait, you from stepping was it just stage. it was just a flashlight not like a laser beam or uh <laughs> no, like no, no, no lightning strike a, like or... the the roadie or whoever was like walking ahead of them shining <laughs> flashlight on the floor so hey they I were mean, just being careful didn't want anyone to trip didn't want anyone to trip over the, the one step yeah the four feet do, from the door to the stage more style you know mm. hey whatever hey, amen we just played. Just, I don't know. They were yeah. pretty epic. They, yeah, we were just no. there. We were just working. I don't know. It's always good to remember that some of these guys are getting a little old. You know, you want to make sure they don't fall over on the way to stage. So yeah, you break a hip and you're on the way out. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's, <laughs> they know. They'll Tell me <laughs> about it. <laughs> They'll come for you. <laughs> and now I'm just picturing it like Doyle on the ground going, "My hip, ah, fuck." Once uh, one goes, the next is right around the corner. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're here to talk about the haunting at Bly Manor, season two of Netflix's mm -hmm. series, The Haunting. But I'm sure we're going to yep. talk about but first. a bunch of things. But first. Oh, no! That's where we put that. <laughs> we have a recording of Shotzi saying horror news. And that's why we keep her on the show when she's not able to be on the show. Oh. So, yeah, that's what that silence was. So, you know. Gotcha. It's like she's here, but with less back talk right. and fewer farts. So, I gotcha. Well, well, we'll decide that after this episode. Slightly we'll fewer see. farts. Slightly fewer Who knows? farts. I mean, I don't know how flat yet. Oubliette might be holding some shit in, literally. You know, I've been on tour with her. She's About, pretty good. Yeah, I'll let you know the second I have to go. I'm like, pull over. I don't <laughs> yeah, mess around. She doesn't. She doesn't mess around. That's true. If there is even like an inkling that poop is like on its way, I'm like, find that restaurant. Okay, we're all touring musicians. How many <laughs> people have shit their pants on tour? I have not because. I stock up on Imodium ADs and I will not eat as we are driving. So there's no food. I eat after a show and that's it when I'm close I'm to the hotel. I don't think I've actually shit my pants, but I have been violently close. Yeah, I, I shit my pants once, not in Tsunami Bomb, but in Love Equals Death. Okay. And I, I blamed it on the drummer. I would just blame it on the band well, totally. I mean, that's what it's I mean. like every who everyone shit their pants for me. <laughs> it's a pullover. You all need to deal with it. That'd be an amazing tactic. I'll remember that when you scream at everybody. It's like somebody Charlie yeah. shit his pants. Everyone's got to pull over. Actually, that would be like yeah. I, I, ne never on tour. Other places, yes, but on tour, no. Nah, I've shit myself. I, I shit in a pizza box. <laughs> Yeah. But, it wasn't, but it wasn't on tour. <laughs> I was going to so say, now, I do not remember that. No, so it's actually a phrase I use now, talking about like the urgency of things or whatever. Like I'll say something and be like, you know, it's like shitting in a pizza box. Oh my God, you and, said and most, that and I never asked. Yeah, and most people <laughs> never fucking ask if it's hilarious because I'm just throwing it to you. I'm throwing it to you. Now you know. Yep. I feel like I failed you as a bandmate because I've not followed that up with like a what? But I, I actually like I've, had, I've had panic dreams because I left it in a parking lot of the poor person who found it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Speaking of panic dreams, this new fear I have lately, I don't know uh -oh. when or why. Dude, it's when I'm flying. Like, mm -hmm. I'm terrified of shitting my pants, falling asleep on the airplane. Because I won't really? shit on an airplane. Oh, yeah. you won't shit on an airplane. No. You don't? I, I make sure I make sure the pipes are clean before I even get to the airport. Like are you afraid nothing. you're gonna fall in? No. I just you know, people are pissing all over the seats and they're like, I can't 
I can't deal with it. So, but like, I don't know what was wrong this one time, one, one of the flights back home recently, maybe within the last seven months or whatever. The Man, I woke pandemic up, terror. I woke, yeah, I woke up and I was like, I was dreaming like I had to shit. And I woke up like just like I woke up as I'm like pushing. I didn't have to like I didn't shit, but I was pushing. And I was like, oh, no, if I had to shit and I was sleeping and I had a shit dream like that, how terrible would that have been? How terrible would it be if you were sitting next to someone? Could you shit? <laughs> that would and be they're bad. Sleeping <laughs> and they just shit themselves like so. It would I think yeah, it would just a, smell like a really bad fart. And you'd just be like, Yeah, I don't know. No, dude, not, you've you've been next to some old people that have shit in their diapers before. You know it doesn't smell like a fart. There's a distinct difference between poopy pants yeah. and farting. <laughs> I love this highbrow level of show that we have going here. We went right, right to the high Right end. to the shitter. Yeah. <laughs> right, we were all class, right, right away, all class. The, the, the episode that Shotzi should be here. <laughs> she, this would, seriously, this alone would be her favorite episode just because of what we're talking about right Poop? now. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But yeah, so that's my new fear. So I, I, I'm like, I don't sleep on planes anymore. I never could really <laughs> anyway, but like I'm just uh, picturing you in the plane, like just <laughs> like, trying to stay awake, it, clinching your butt cheeks the whole time. It's, <laughs> it's fucking terrible. It's terrible. Like, oh my god. Like, now, I, now, see, now I want to take a flight with you just to fuck with you the whole time. <laughs> I won't sleep. Like some, I won't say, like but Newtons? you know, would you like a fig Newton? Would you oh, like uh, dude, I, friends, I don't, sir? <laughs> I don't eat. I don't eat at the airport. Like oh sometimes I'll eat the little fucking snack they give you, but that's dangerous. That's it's calculated. I'm like, all right, I got an hour left. I'll I always fucking eat the snack snacks. on some food before I land. I eat but the yeah, but you know what, dude? Stephen King books are the best for flying because they're so fucking long. Like yeah. I finally finished it. Oh, there you go. What do you think of the it? book? Well, I mean, I've I've read some of it or most of it years and years and years and years ago, but like there's so much shit that I did not remember from the book. Yeah, there's a lot. And, there's some and, fucked up things in that book. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Which leads me to our first bit of horror Steve. news. No, no, <laughs> Stephen King. I was going to say this has, is the best. And not, this is the best flip ever. If you turn this into news, go on. No, there's you know, we've heard his excuses. Oh man, I was gacked out on coke and oh, I was drinking. Yeah, right. Um, there's a lot of homo, not even homoerotic, just straight out gay sex that happens a lot in his books that I've noticed and that has to do with children there's a lot of weird shit especially it I don't hate I'm not throwing stones or nothing I'm just saying um, yeah there's some yeah that's weird and that I've been around a lot of coke heads I know people on coke and drunk and they're <laughs> never like oh my god I have this great idea for this book I'm writing I'm gonna put this child <laughs> but before that wait 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 man oh i gotta listen i'm gonna take him to a there's, there's gonna this one girl she's gonna be looking in this junkyard and these two two bullies and one kid's gonna be like hey man let's light our farts on fire and then and then that's gonna lead to some blow jays like yeah yeah, yeah. i was like oh Right, this part. Hmm. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, this. This mm -hmm. is what I okay. did. It's a lot of random shit that <laughs> I didn't need to be in that book. Cocaine's a hell of a drug, Key. Like Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, it is. It's a great excuse for tons of shit that people that people use a lot too. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's yeah. Great. That's exactly what I'm gonna say. But mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's good. There's a lot of shit, and there's a lot of uh, 
gratuitous another thing that's in his books what sure i guess it could be reflective on the time but a lot of gratuitous n-bomb droppings like him and quentin Tarantino. Oh, yeah. it's like yeah. it's yeah. like an obsession it's like an obsession with them like they need to and i'm like well that didn't really need to be well they there. find a way to do it they find a way to right it in that's what go. i mean it's See, like it has to be here I mean, you're like yeah. mm, it doesn't have to be there but <laughs> okay you know what i mean but right. Aside from all of that, because hey, as a yeah. fan of G.G. Allen, I could look past a lot of stuff and be like, mm-hmm. I appreciate the art. It was a good, it's a good book. Probably yeah. my favorite uh, Stephen King book. Huh. But, uh, and again, the 90s miniseries, way more accurate than the two movies. Like, you know, so dude, much more accurate. It's so weird. Um, you know, I saw that as a kid and then again as an adult and it obviously wasn't nearly as scary as when I saw it as a kid, but it's weird, like that movie in particular, just like The Shining, like there's a scene where, I think it's in a library, I don't remember, but Pennywise is up, you're like in a foyer and Pennywise is up on a balcony, yep. like mm-hmm. looking down. I, to this day, anytime I walk in a building that has like a foyer with a wraparound balcony, immediately look like over my shoulder, like that direction, just to check to see if anything's there. And like, it's really so should. weird that something like that has actually like affected, you know, same thing with The Shining and the twins in the hallway. Every time I'm walking right. down um, a hotel, you know, walkway and there's an elevator at the end. I always think of that, but it's it's funny how something's so small, and I don't even remember what happens in that scene or if it was anything particularly bad, but just how he appeared, like at that angle, has like every time I think of that. Yeah, it really resonated in with that, you, stuck with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I don't blame you. Clowns but can it, be kind of creepy. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's funny, just like as an adult walking down the street, and you'll notice some people that like jump over rain gutters. If you ever ask like take the time and be like why did you do that a lot of them will trace it back to that movie I'm like oh after i saw it i just they creep me up <laughs> yeah something grab their ankles and pull them in mm-hmm. yeah that makes sense or crackheads <laughs> yeah that too yeah yeah we all float down here yeah right but anyway yeah the the book's great and the 90s miniseries is way better than the movies mm-hmm. relating to the book just because yeah. even the stuff they did change They've just like almost kind of changed the people or just kind of like mashed it together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Like all the same, same stuff still happens, but it's like, oh, because Stephen King loves to just write and then reflect for yeah. 10 exactly. pages and then jump. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, yeah. you got these, what would be 30 scenes in this, you know, in the book. 30 scenes in a movie it's like okay we got to get them down to like five so let's kind of just cram it all together and sometimes they took liberties to switch the people who did what or whatever but it worked and it made sense whereas in the in the two movies you're like that one that didn't happen two that person wasn't doing it even in you know i don't know yeah i have a lot of issues with those two movies you know if i don't think of them as stephen king's it I really like them and I think they're fun, right. but I don't consider them horror movies necessarily. And it was funny because people were talking about, some people actually said it was scary. I think of it more on along the lines of like gremlins or something. Like I think it nods yeah. horror, but I think it's definitely more like this coming of age sort of almost kid friendly set of movies. I mean, it's not kid friendly, but much more palatable for like, you know, people coming of age than the original it which was like everyone I knew who saw it when they were a kid or a preteen wanted to like never sleep again. Mm -hmm. No, totally. And it's interesting because they struggled. Those movies struggled, especially like there was a lot of behind the scenes story behind those two movies. And uh, just as a quick plug to everybody listening, we do have episodes on this. We have episode six on it chapter one. And then we have episode 34 is on it chapter two, where we talk about this and we talk about the original miniseries pretty in depthly because how can you not, how can you talk about those new movies without talking about that mini TV miniseries? But I, th- I would definitely say though I appreciate like my, my brother, my little brother, Johnny, uh, who we had knows uh, he had this best 
thing about it, I and I think you guys will both appreciate, it, and I say it in those episodes where he said, if this, if these new movies were called Boo Scary Clown, this would be the best Boo Scary Clown movies that ever existed. It's it he's the Pennywise is awesome in that scary way, but it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't really feel like Stephen King's it. It doesn't capture it as well as the original episode. It gets a lot of things wrong by shifting things forward and the tonal quality of everything's all over the place. Chapter two tries to make up too much lost ground. It's just really. It was all just too safe too <coughs> for me. Like even the jump scares and everything, it seems so PG and safe. Right. I don't know. I honestly. I guess I was just, I was just really thinking it was going to be more psychological. Right. So then after watching it, I'm like, yeah, that was a fun, you know, really expensive jump scare movie yeah <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't really scary <laughs> yeah and i think also with moving it to the 80s they lost the quality of like the reason pennywise looked like a clown was to lure kids in and then terrify right. them right. but like that doesn't work if this clown is scary from war the very first time you see the new pennywise he's like yeah, he's that's terrifying free. and creepy for in anything in 80s like by the 80s already clowns were already in creepy territory at that point like people weren't it because in the 50s like bozo the clown was a children's host so it's like it's not the same you know you're not right, gonna get right, the same right. reaction of why like you see a clown in a sewer even without it you'd be like what the fuck are you doing down there what the hell is that that's crazy so i don't agree yeah but all right what about horror that. news? is there any see i wish yes. we had a good pivot <laughs> of like news. The, Oubliette has news. You have news. I do. Bring the in the fan- news. <laughs> the Fangoria Chainsaw Awards are um, coming soon. And right now, all the voting is open. So everyone should go and vote for their favorite movies this last year. But more specifically, one of our friends, Heather Buckley, is up for uh, Blood and Flesh, The Real Life and Ghastly Death of Al Adamson that she did. So you should go well, that's vote cool. for her. That was I mentioned that on a uh, past episode. That yeah. that movie. Watch it. Yeah, that movie. You watched the, 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 the documentary. The documentary. It's good. It's a documentary. It's, is it? Yeah, I want, it's, it's on good. my list. Cool. I want to see it. It's, it's wild. Like he was a. I don't want to give any spoilers if people haven't seen it already. But yeah. Okay. There's some shit. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> what's it on? Is I don't want to say. It was on Shutter. It might still be on Shutter. Is where I saw, it. but uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's it's got a a kind of Tiger King vibe. Oh, hmm. just with the with the players in it, the people in it. You're like, oh yeah, okay, because they're you know, few eccentric types. But uh, it's good. I suggest everyone check it out. Nice. Cool. Dom, nice. you have any horror news? Um, I was uh, stoked to find out recently. I mean, I don't think there's a I wish I had more, but the one thing I do have is uh, the announcement. I saw that there's an announcement that there is a true sequel to Cloverfield coming out. So yeah. that. that's kind of cool. I mean, it's been 10 years since the found footage film had uh, uh, its movie. And that's kind of weird. And though they did do uh, Cloverfield Paradox and 10 Cloverfield Lane, which we're not talking about those movies today, but you can judge for yourself whether they're great. I think one is all right and one is not so great. Either one of them is as exciting as the original. Um, but uh, it's kind of cool that it's happening, um, that they're finally moving forward. I almost, I don't know. I mean, I almost wonder if they've waited too long because it's like, I didn't really care that much about Cloverfield to begin with. So when I saw other Cloverfields come out, I was kind of like, I don't care. And they and I mean I like that JJ right. Abrams bad robot company always adds in this like <clears throat> depth and lore and all this crazy stuff, but it's almost like I've I've never I've just never been on board completely while I liked that original movie. What do you guys think? Yeah. Too much is it too much too late or I wasn't a big fan of, of Cloverfield. No. So you guys didn't like you it? No. No, I mean it was like all right, the whole shaky point of view camera thing it was kind of tired yeah yeah it got rolled rolled i'm like i just want to see what the fuck's going on like we get it (laughs) yeah you know what i mean like what the fuck is happening like i see you know 
Yeah, I don't like the shaky cam, especially when it's like the shaky cam that's like just barely showing you what's going on and the suspense thing. Like right. that doesn't get me. It just same. It annoys the shit out of me. Well, that was that was my <laughs> problem with the uh, uh, the fucking what was the witch movie? Blair Witch. Blair Witch. Like, oh, dude, I saw I that hated with Dominic that in the theater. Yeah, right. And I, our and our guitarist thought it was real, and we let him believe it was real because we were on sworn. tour at the time of all the press. Yeah, so not our like, current guitarist. The guitarist. Right, the yeah, yeah, Brian Plank. And I was yeah. like, we're just we should just let him believe it's real. He so thought went, it was way real. He was fully he was fully hooked. Do you remember we ate at the Cadillac <coughs> Diner afterwards, where the waitresses scream at you and dance to fifties music, and mm-hmm. nobody was saying a fucking word, and he was like shaking, even though at that point he knew it wasn't real. He was still so traumatized. I just remember throwing straws <laughs> at him, and he just didn't move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a weird, that was a weird day. It was a weird thing to do after that movie. And I think we had kind yeah. of a, it was a kind of mine. Yeah, there's a band fight of one of the rare out, like, yeah, I don't know how your band is, E, but our band is sort of a quiet fighter. It's like, it's very subtle, like mind games on each other. But this was one of the rare times in our history where we fully got an argument. The band yeah. was like fighting. And then we went it to was a... awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, I was it... so happy because I'm like, finally, just fucking yell. Yeah. Right. You guys are like, he's like, I'm fuck tired you, you, it's real. And you're like, no, yeah. like, no, it's not, dude. It's a totally fake movie. And he's like, no, fuck. I wish that you. was the fight. Wait. I wish that no, was the that fight. No, that wasn't the fight. It was way worse yeah. than that. I mean, but he then... was mad about that, but then we had a real fight, which was, I mean, it was right. great. Let me just tell you, there was some serious passive aggressive like mental <laughs> warfare going on no. so when the first screen started i was like finally just get it all out yeah, yeah. it was it was kill each other it. if you want i don't care you gotta love it <laughs> it was an it was a full on argument and then we immediately go to a place where they're throwing stuff at customers and like nobody's in the mood for 50s it 50s music dressed right. like marilyn monroe jukebox dancing it was great i know normally no. that would have been totally <laughs> rad. I, just, I just remember I think Emily got a burger and she was just sitting there anger eating her burger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like everybody was just quiet and like angrily stuffing French fries in their face while uh, there's like five waiters doing a fucking dance to Great Balls of Fire. It was oh. amazing. <laughs> it was one amazing. Of the <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. But yeah, by the time by the time Cloverfield And I was happy. I was yeah, you probably the only one in the <laughs> I was enjoying every minute of it. You're like, Ooh, yeah, it's like, oh, you gonna eat those French fries? Give me some of that. Oh, yeah, whatever. Fuck probably, yeah. Fries. That's not. That's actually not far off. Um, how she would have been. Yeah, anyway. I can. Ang- I can angrily drink a milkshake too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was a lot of like. Yeah, it was a lot of like. We're it in was a the restaurant last day of tour. Was it the last day of tour? Was, yeah. Damn. Yep. We're in Coronado. We just. I, I, and that everything. was right after I had come, gotten better from being really sick and having that really bad allergic reaction. Yes, Jesus Christ. And so I was just over it and I just wanted food because I hadn't eaten in a couple of days. So I was like, fucking fight. I don't care. Just, yeah, give me your French fries. You, exactly. Yeah. You were allergic to all the passive aggressiveness going on. You're like, oh, probably making me break out on hives. <laughs> probably, that probably was it, you know, she, looking she back in right retrospect. Up. Yeah, after yeah. they fought, it was like medicine. It was cleared great. right up, it's right, gone. everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's how we remember, uh, and that's why I remember that I was already sick of the found footage thing by the time Cloverfield went. Right? <laughs> See that segue? Yeah. That's a segue. Uh, segue. <laughs> that is a fucking segue. Um, that worked. But, but that's when I realized that I was like, I mean, we we, I was I was just already over the found footage thing, and like I feel like the newer Godzilla movies, at least that initial Godzilla movie, took some of their influence from Cloverfield because they wouldn't show the fucking monsters enough. It kept cutting away to the people. And I just, that's what would happen in Cloverfield. And I just, oh. I don't care about people in a monster movie like that. I want to see the monster. Which is another perfect segue into one of my horror news topics. Hey. The Godzilla oh. versus King Kong trailer. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yeah, that's right. I'm excited about this one. Me too. I'll always get excited about monster movies like this. Um, yeah, right. Me too. I am excited. Sucking. I do not, I still do not like Godzilla is like Bigfoot. He looks like Bigfoot and he acts like Bigfoot in these new movies. Godzilla in, in Skull or King Island Kong? or King yeah. Kong, I mean. Oh, looks like Bigfoot, yeah. acts like Bigfoot. Okay. Yeah, he's just way, he's too human. Like, I need a little more monkey in my king ape. 
Hmm. Just need a little bit. Hmm. And he's he seems really smart. Like he's like I said, there's just a little too much uh, humanity in him. I need a little more. I appreciate the monkey and rampage. <laughs> right? I actually liked that movie. It was terrible, but also so. fun. I liked it way better than I thought I would. I, sh- I shouldn't I liked have liked the monkey a lot. <laughs> we should do an episode on Rampage because there's a lot of good and there's a lot of terrible in that movie. <clears throat> but are you saying The Rock is terrible? Yeah, don't talk about The Rock like that. Everything the, he does is great. The Rock knows what he did. Especially those steroids. But <laughs> yeah, I said it. I well, dude, he's like what, 50s? Yeah. Um, he's not No, no. He no the Rock's like the Rock's like Don't as old you- as we are. No. Actually, he might be younger than us. Oh, yeah. No. 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 No, he's no. not. Okay, may, maybe a little older. Maybe a little older. He's Hold older. He's not? Yeah, he's, he's older, older than I am. He's born like the 60s. He's 48. Oh. So yeah. he's older than He's 48. Than yeah. Okay. Right. All right. He's not that I old. mean, I ain't young, <laughs> but but he's older. Um, This movie, I'm excited about it, man. I know it's like a total computer-generated, like, crazy fest but i do like these movies and i have enjoyed it and i do love you guys should i should i say the spoiler because it was in the commercial and a lot of people have talked about it but i was wondering who the big bad was going to be of this movie because there's no way you're going to have king kong or godzilla beat each other in a fight they never do it they never finish it like that so mecha godzilla is clearly the 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 big bad that unites them to fight which i'm stoked about i'm into and there's right. a couple clues in the commercial like some real obvious uh that it is and then the toys the toy, the toy lines, lines fucked it. it all up yeah, yeah they, right they right out that. right out the gate they like what are you doing fast. what the fuck are you guys doing? months ago spoiled it and it was like okay but uh I don't know. I mean, how did you like the movies, uh, Oubliette? Did you like Godzilla? And then it was what? uh, King of the Monsters and uh, Skull Mm -hmm. Island. Skull Island. I think, it's funny, I think we talked about this a bit ago. I had the same problem with um, the first one, especially just too many people. Yeah. Like, I'm fine with I'm fine with storylines. I'm fine with, you know, the suspense, everything else, but I think certain brands and certain types of movies like you know what you want and with Godzilla like yes give me a very simple storyline with some people that's quick but mainly I want to see the monster killing everybody or destroying shit like it's just one of those things like I want to see explosions I want to see destruction I want at least one part where you feel bad for the monster and a lot of parts where you're on his side yeah yeah I thought King of the Monsters was an improvement on this eye candy you know yeah I thought King, the last King of the Monsters was an improvement. Um, I'm hoping, and it looks like in the trailer that it's very monster heavy. It looks like it's a whole lot of, I mean, I don't know. I feel like all the reasons that real like newspaper critics and movie, all the movie critics that would criticize one of these movies is what I would like. I was like, I don't, I don't care about any humans. Yeah. I don't care about. I like what's her name uh the girl from strange stranger things like i like millie her bobby brown millie bobby brown i like her but i just don't care about her family dynamic yeah. i really want to see godzilla and like, rodan i don't give and, a fuck who any of the actors are in those movies yeah, i just you're no fucks you're literally yeah. humans in these kind of movies humans money. should be transition just transition me i want to see one of them run from one scene to the next so i can see more monsters i, I don't you know and if you don't want to do that don't make the movie but I'm excited for this one. I know E, you're conflicted, but I I agree with Uliet. I'm excited. No, I I'm excited. I still like it. It's so enjoyable. I just oh, I love King Kong so much, and it's like Peter Jackson made him a giant gorilla, which is what he really was. You know, in the original, he was he was an ape. He was a that big was the old intention, yeah. Giant gorilla. You know what I mean? So I think Peter Jackson's remake will always to me be like okay that remake was that's what it was you know um it, the bar was set high for that this one the, the skull island like i said he's a little more bigfoot like a little more plant new planet of the apes like yeah. like i'm really intelligent <clears throat> and i'm walking upright most of the time or you know i mean just give him a little more right fucking make him a little more apish and i'd be like all right because the actual design of the uh 
of God or of King Kong is it's pretty close to the 1933 one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just the, the way it looks, you know what I mean? But man, just have them gallop on four leg, you know, like well, on, yeah, I on think... all fours every once in a while and or just make them. Well, uh, yeah, it goes back to the beginning of why it was so successful was that King Kong was just like a hint, a tiny hint of like humanity and emotion that was human like. Like for most right. of it, you know, it wasn't at all. But then that's when you actually start, you know, feeling for the <coughs> character, and realizing. But when they they humanize them so early on, or like are doing all this these other kind of tricks, it just defeats the purpose. And I don't think somebody going into the series who hadn't known about the other ones would ever have that same sort of feeling. Right. For King Kong, it's like totally yeah a different. We, he's, he's he's like an action star. Yeah. But yeah, I think At they changed point, his like, character a lot. You know, so there is one. Uh, who who made the comparison, but. I noticed it on the trailer where he, Godzilla comes up and busts through the ship and then King Kong jumps off of it and they were like, and they put like a side by side of that and what's his nuts from Die Hard, Bruce Willis jumping out of the <laughs> window. He's like, totally did, yeah. the, did the Die Hard jump and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was There's- probably on purpose, like for fun. Like they probably thought that was cool. Right. But oh, I don't know. I'm still gonna like it as long as it's got a lot of monsters wrecking shit. Yeah. And everything, so. Yeah. I just hope they That's didn't overthink I'm... overthink it. Yeah. You don't need to overthink it. Yeah. The no. fan base that they should be targeting are the people who just want to see monsters breaking shit. So don't waste Dude, your time on the other stuff. Some of the figures I saw these this amazing King Kong figure that I really liked that that is this King Kong, but you can also adjust it so it leans over perfectly ape-like with like the fists, the hands that change out and the head that changes out. And the Godzilla looked great and I was super stoked on them. And then I saw the price tag each is like <coughs> bucks. And I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know if I'm adding that to my glass case. I, I think that might be a who, little too much. Who did it? Was it Mondo? Mondo toys? Because their shits are always so Probably. Expensive. It was crazy expensive. It was so cool. Um, which which is ridiculous because you know there's always a debate oh Mondo's better than NECA like whatever but dude, for the price you cannot beat the NECA toys that are like 30 bucks mm-hmm. yeah full, full articulation you know what I mean super detailed but, yeah I, th- I think it was a Mondo I think it is a Mondo King Kong yeah I'm not I, I mean, you know, as artists, I'm sure. Or we Bandai. I think it might be Bandai. Bandai. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's Bandai. I have a feeling. Yeah, it's Bandai. And it's like, it's not available. It's pre order. It's pre order still. And it's not cheap. <clears throat> yeah. Fuck that. Not cheap. But at all. speaking of speaking of toys and that are affordable mm-hmm. and awesome, NECA has put a teaser up of Frankenstein or the monster or whatever you Frank Boris oh, Karloff nice. as the monster in Frankenstein. That's cool. they, they acquired what's that? They haven't done one of those before. I'm a little confused because I feel like Mm-mm. there's never been a NECA Frankenstein monster. No. They really? just acquired the the rights to the universal stuff, I guess it maybe this year or last year. But this is the first time they put a teaser up, which looks pretty cool. And it's going to be the standard, like that seven inch, like most of their other cool ones are. But, uh, really? yep, hopefully they'll do, you know, the Wolfman and Dracula and all that. Oh, guaranteed. So take I mean, 100%. All of my money. They also <laughs> acquired the right, they acquired the rights to the, the Hammer, Hammer film. Really? Yeah. So that's sick. At some point, I'm sure they'll be doing some hammer stuff. Yeah, man. If they got Universal Monsters, they're gonna do all of it. Like I guarantee they're gonna do all of it. That's pretty sweet. Oh, Dom, did you see? I, I got my haunted mansion tiki glass. Oh, that is so cool! Everyone, if you could see this, you wish you could because it's rad. That is great. It's the best thing ever. That's a great it design. Will, it'll literally make you a better person, and none of you can see except for me and Dom. 
No. Yep. So we, so uh, everyone in Sonoma Bomb is a humongous Disney fan, and we all like all the tiki stuff they put out, though only a few of us can get it. But literally, our band thread is every so often 100% Disney tiki uh, mugs and glasses that are awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I am not a big Disney World and or Disneyland guy. If you came but, to Disneyland or Disney World with Tsunami Bomb. With us, you would be. It's a difference. <laughs> the, haunted, the Haunted Mansion is awesome. The Haunted Mansion is awesome. We will make you drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> We've converted <laughs> more than one person. Many, many people. <laughs> uh, <I'm, clears throat> many people. <laughs> so true, too. We've totally. You, you, can, you can fight it in your mind right now all that you want. You can, have, you can think whatever might happen would happen, but you're wrong. You're going to walk out of there with like ears on, it's like for me, ready to go back. I don't know. I, I Shotzi has tried and she has failed. I like it. Mm-hmm. I, I like attractions though. So whatever attract, I'm not a big amusement park, like rides. I don't really mm-hmm. care about that. I want to see cool shit. Right. So uh, the Haunted Mansion, but the, the Lagoon show is pretty rad. I was into that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll see. So. Yeah. We'll see if it ever <laughs> happens. It's different. It's different, yes. man. Snow and bomb rolls different. We've had we've had people who are like, yeah, okay. Next thing you know, they're like, ah, cried, happy, buying all. I mean, the not to mention that I make you go to Trader Sam's and drink one of every drink every time I go. That helps put you in the mood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I don't drink, so that's going to be a tough mountain to climb. Well, um. I will roofie your water and then take you <laughs> to Disney. <laughs> We'll just, we'll You're just gonna uh, like it, motherfucker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we get at Bernie's E at Disneyland. Yeah, exactly. like I will tranquilize you and take you like, to all the attractions you want. <laughs> so, so, did you like it? Be like, I don't remember anything. I guess. That's great. <laughs> I think I did. I, don't know. I just remember Oubliette talking to me about just drink, shh, just drink this, and then. You need to hydrate. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, e, you look so thirsty. Here's here, here drink this. What? And then mm-hmm. that'll be a special uh, YouTube episode of Monster Candy <laughs> Podcast where we drug and take E to <laughs> the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> you just need to sign a form of consent first, please. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like that always sunny episode where they're doing acid outside the football game. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. <laughs> Down. Well, I think, is that it for horror news? I guess we should talk yeah, about what we're supposed to talk about. Oh, shit. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we're about to talk about Netflix season two, The Haunting of Bly Manor. That is, it, which is a direct uh, continuation of the first season the Haunting of Hill House, which was a smash success from 2018. I don't, did we ever talk about this, E? I feel like we mentioned no, it, we but had, I don't know. We mentioned it, but Oubliette had the perfect uh, title for this. Oh, what's I don't that? even know if you remember. I know, I was She's drunk like, when I, I was talking I to you about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> I think me and her are on the same page with this. I guarantee so you she guys po- are. I she could possibly online. still be on the same page. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe. You did did have a little change in the, before we started recording. But anyway, she goes, <laughs> you mean the haunting of Blah Manor? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's exactly how. Uh, I mean. mm. Well. Yeah. I mean, they did, I think they did everybody dirty with this. They just, they did. I am someone who absolutely loves when horror can uh, intertwine fairy tale like stories and -hmm. you know have you know heartbreak love whatever and all these things and do it really well but this one just like just fucking went too far it wanted to do a little bit of everything and then it just shit the bed and then it and then the ending was just bullshit that's my biggest issue with this thing is that to me, it felt like I was watching almost every season of uh, fucking American Horror Story. Totally. Is they 
is they get into something and you're like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm going along with it. And then it just takes a left fucking turn and a detour to a bunch of other shit. And I'm like, <sighs> I don't Oh, yeah, know. like and, like and having it, someone fuck you while they're fucking your sister to fuck you or whatever. Just that all this American shit where I'm one. like, <laughs> right. I'm like, I don't need to, none of this needs to be here, right? Like, it's just, it just gets super loose butthole. And then I'm like, yeah. I don't fucking care. Just get back to the to the thing, and then all these twists and turns, and then it just it seems like it takes forever. I'm like, I Holy will fuck, say when's this gonna end? I yeah. will say that compared to Hill House, I felt like I had critiques of a haunting of Hill House, but I enjoyed the series and I did feel like that was a tighter story, which inevitably everything that they included did lend itself to the main narrative. Whereas this one had a lot of offshoots that did not have really anything to do with anything, nor did they ever fill it, uh, fill it out. Apparently, and I didn't know this, but maybe you guys did, but I didn't. Did you? So this series was um, created by Mike Flanagan, and you might recognize Mike Flanagan from like Doctor Sleep. Uh, he did that movie Gerard, Gerard's Game. Those are his two mm-hmm. Stephen King adaptions. Uh, he did the first both seasons. This is the haunting se- series is his baby. And right. I didn't know this, but this was <clears throat> adapt- mostly it's an adaptation of the 1898 novel, The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. And it, it includes a number of other Henry James novels, right. novelas into a lot of his ghost stories. And they kind of give you snippets of them some of the ghosts that are in this house and to be honest i can kind of tell that there's a lot of like stories and plots that they just threw on the yeah way. so like it earlier when you were talking people. about like tarantino and whoever you know adding the n-word willy-nilly like that's what this guy <laughs> just did with fucking horror he was yeah. like all right let's just sprinkle this in there let's throw this fucking guy in there whatever let's get a big chest and put a woman in it you know whatever right, yeah <laughs> there was a lot of shit and i'm like what? It, what? Like, it did then, feel a little bit extra yeah. sand in a 15 not quite 15 pounds of sand in a 10 pound bag but more like definitely at least 12 or 13 pounds of sand in this bag well one thing like i feel like i'm pretty perceptive watching movies and catching underlying things but one thing so i read a synopsis before we did this just so i could remember names and, and everything and there was one thing in it i read that i actually didn't get it really bothered me that certain dead people were visible and others weren't. Mm-hmm. Did you guys, do you guys know why that is? Is there a reason? No. I, I, yeah, there's, I a, like, there's a very real reason. <laughs> and apparently we were all supposed to figure that out, but I didn't. What, no one. what is the reason? So, it's dumb as shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you anyway, <laughs> because I was like, well, the reason I find it so dumb is that they could have alluded to it so easily and it would have um, negated like a lot of my hostility towards the show. Um, they, the whole thing is, is that when you're, you die at the manor, you know, you're trapped there. Mm-hmm. Once you realize you're dead, that's when you go to that like other realm. But then I find that bullshit too, because when the teacher died, the whole beginning of it, are we allowed to talk about spoilers? Yeah, go I mean, ahead. We are, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. The whole beginning, yeah, she's looking at her dead body in the well. Yeah, okay. She's looking at her dead body in the well. Right. Right. So, but you but, could see her through the whole fucking show. But she was in denial for the most part. Like, she didn't know, really but remember that. she still that. saw her damn body. Yeah, but I think she was like, they even uh, say at the end where she, that, well, that know, one part where they pushing it like, out of her. Yeah, she's like her her own self subconscious is like you know what's going on. We we how many times do we have to do this before you catch on, you know? Right. And, it's, and so once she realized, yeah. she you know transcends to whatever but, I mean, space. Yeah. Still, you she would still have that at least for a split second that thought like oh my god I'm dead. So right away you'd be like oh there you go, no. You're off right. You know what I mean? No, like, exactly. It's like, why show her looking at her body and just because you think it's cool to go back to that at the end to let people know they saw something they didn't realize they saw? Because it doesn't right. work with the story. Yeah. No, I okay. think it was pretty much 
that you know i think that's implied that the the level of denial that she's able to put herself in and in some ways i find that the most tragic her story is one of the more tragic but like but also kind of forced tragic i did like her jumping around because i feel like they expanded on what happened to uh the younger sister the twin sister in hill house expanding on the time you know playing with time and her her experience like I did like showing that for her, her haunting was very um, dreamlike. I did like that. I like that her her experience was like, she just kind of rolled with wherever she was. Like, she was like, oh, I'm here now. Or I'm bouncing around constantly. So it was interesting. Uh, it was an interesting, but also ultimately it was designed to throw us off so we don't understand what's actually happening. Um, it was just too much stuff. Like it was just like over gratuitous. Yeah. It was yeah. I don't know who I don't know who told this guy that he was like the smartest person in the world or whatever the fuck happened before he decided to go into this. It was like a shamalama ding dong movie and he's like Yeah, oh, but it was just too much. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, uh, here we go. And then the ending, I didn't like I didn't like the random love story at the end. No, it was just fucking that it, right there is what I that to me is a shameful way to open yourself up to a broader audience and make it into something yeah. else oh, yeah, when, yeah, it yeah. Out of, when it seemed out of place. Like to me, that was completely, it was completely strategic. Out of place. It was totally strategic he, to try to make it all of a sudden this like, you know, lesbian love story. And I'm like, I well, it, didn't see it totally, enough hints in the beginning. Uh, I will say it seemed like it went from zero to 50. Like with those two, like there were no immediate hints. Like I feel like generally speaking, it, you should hint at what love story is happening. Like you should understand characters hints. have chemistry. I don't feel feel like I saw mm-hmm. hints until it was up and going and obvious that that's where this was going. Like in the initial, well, uh, I yeah. mean, hints or not, the ending was so heavy handed. It like made the yeah. whole whole series about the last half of the episode, and then totally. the last t- ten minutes. I'm like. Well, real what, quick, side note. Fuck? No, if you ask anyone about that and like uh, the storyline or what they liked about it, they're just going to talk about that last episode and the love story. Right. You don't hear anyone it's talking like, here about Here we go. Like, like okay. the other couple trying to take the kids' bodies, the Lady of the Lake stuff, like the sister being sick, like any of those other sub stories. It's like everybody is so focused on that because they did. They just, you know, went all the way for it. And all of a sudden it became this tragic love story. In, the last 30 minutes an hour i will give it, it was it was an easy play to to capture an oh. audience i'll give the oh, oh, demographic and, and ready yeah. a, a little bit of a, a nod though like uh, when she played she played danielle danny clayton that's the name i have a list of the characters here so i can actually mm-hmm. identify people um <clears throat> she was nell in the first episode i didn't recognize that as her because of her pattern of speaking and the way they styled her, it took me a minute to figure out who that actress was for a second. I mean, maybe I'm the only one that did that, but one, I found the way she spoke really annoying. But two, like huh. as, as like the accent in her her delivery, but that was the purpose. Like she was trying to portray a very different character than herself. And I thought that was, I thought she did a really good job of that. She was incredibly consistent in her manner of speaking and her behavior. I think that woman is a really great actress. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if her character, if she played her character to make people annoyed with her the entire time, like, <laughs> I think she yeah. annoyed the shit out of me the I entire time. I think that was the point. Yeah. I think like, that was the point. I think there was like, a certain amount of that. I'm like, oh, I hope this bitch dies. Like, I just want her, like, she, she sucked. I did not like the character. Because Nell, you know? her character yeah. Nell uh, wasn't like that. Like, Nell didn't right. sound or act like that. Like, she didn't act like that in the last series. Like, that's not how she spoke. That's not how she stood. Yeah. Like, she really took on a, a purposefully different mannerism, mannerism, completely different from the the type of, like, the fragile, brittle character she played in the first series, um, mm-hmm. which I thought, you know, like that's like so to your to your uh, to answer your statement. Yes, I think she was purposely trying to be annoying. I think she wanted to show this yeah. woman yeah. was very different. But that even goes. I mean, that makes the whole series even that much more annoying. That her character kind of sucked, and then she becomes this like person who gives up everything. You're talking about right. Danny, right? Who gives yeah. up everything at the yeah, end, yeah. you know, to free all the souls from Bly. 
but yet she doesn't get to be with you know her true love it's like you know, know what I just toss, did, but toss one out. <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. That was good. That was good. I think they heard it. I think you can hear it in the clicking. The... Yeah. Yeah. Like that was good. Yep. Toss them batter. You know, I think it's <laughs> interesting. One thing that I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know if I liked it or disliked it, but there was a uh, many hauntings in this series that weren't actually hauntings. Like her whole experience of seeing her ex-boyfriend wasn't a haunting that's not his ghost that was just her experiencing visions and traumatized a trauma guilt based vision just like henry thomas is henry wingrave which by the way i'm really stoked to see henry thomas working like i i don't know i loved him in et it's nice to see him as an adult look almost exactly the same but right. weirdly the same but you know he looks good and he's doing a good job this time he plays an english man entirely but his haunting his other version of himself isn't isn't a haunting it's just him talking to himself and hating himself so it's like it's interesting right, that this right. series threw off through a lot of that out to confuse and pad the hauntings that were happening um, i don't know if it was necessary i don't but... know i still yeah. think that they were playing <coughs> they were trying to expand their their audience i think they were hitting on topics of of like <clears throat> mental instability oh, yeah. and it, trauma and different things because that's big right now yeah. i just yeah. it's weird i just see so much of that stuff to me seemed forced and the way they went about it i just yeah. feel like they, it was very thought out on what they were doing mm-hmm. it, it was 100 percent calculated and they're like all right yeah we're gonna do this to grab this demographic and oh you know mm-hmm. even though it really had nothing to further the story initially right. you know the initial story or anything so I agree. I was not. I have to, I will say one thing Uh, again. I want a major nod also to, I think Alice Calmer as the younger Flora and Benjamin Evan Ainsworth as Miles Wingrave, the younger brother, the older brother. The kids did a really great job. Like to me, they lynched this up. Like that kid would take on a completely entirely different stance and look every time he was possessed. And yeah, the acting was great. I mean, he's a little, he's a young kid and he's just going, oh, I'm a weird kind of spooked, haunted, traumatized kid. And now I'm hitting on you, you know, and like, <laughs> uh, you know, and then her, so, whole, baby. Like, Laura, exactly. you know, her's like, what was the phrase that she kept saying all the time? It's, it's one and it's us. It's excellent. That thing? Or it's absolutely oh. fabulous or yes, something uh, like that. She said, it, was it, was it exquisite? Absolutely exquisite absolutely or something exquisite, like that? Baby yeah it was it it was cute i'm it's on the tip of my tongue which what her phrase was but she'd utter it over and over again but she managed to deliver it in a way that splendid 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 that's it it was absolutely splendid that was a it was a it was a nice wink and nod and then you eventually figure out (laughs) yeah no patience a lot of these a lot of these people were annoying yeah i think that's the thing too the little girl was just over the top. Did you find them annoying? Did you find these actors annoying in Hill House though? Were they annoying then Not too? So much. Or did did you guys like Hill House? That first I season? thought it was all right. <coughs> yeah, I, I thought I, it was all right. I thought that they did a lot better job with the cohesive story, and I thought they did a lot better job kind of going into the topic of trauma and how people deal with trauma and process. The events that transpired where this one to me just seemed really fake right and like just thrown in to you know hit on a hot topic right now yeah 100 mm-hmm. percent piggybacking on stuff like all right yeah we did kind of did this in the first one too let's uh mm-hmm. let's elaborate and add more stuff about this stuff that doesn't necessarily mean anything to anything else in this story but uh it'll get some right. people to really like it Well, that's the thing, too. If you think about it, like if in each episode you can hit on something like that where you think you're going to get an audience involved because they can, you know, relate to it, then by the end of the show, if people stay on, you know, you've tacked on how many more viewers. Right. I suppose. I mean, I guess. Even though it's a modge podge of bullshit at the end. (laughs) And it sucks because there was some good, I mean, I feel like there was some good things in there the the couple that was trying to possess the kids i thought i don't know that i, I didn't like that, I didn't li- I didn't that like was that. all 
that was all bullshit to me but I did I liked the two sisters and the getting sick sort of story with the the chest like I, like that kind of whimsy I enjoy and I, mm -hmm. I wish that that would have been something that happened earlier on and was mm -hmm. more prevalent in it it's weird like I really feel like if you kind of cut out some pieces and rearranged you could have a better cohesive story that didn't seem yeah. just like so off-putting it really just well, the, and, I don't know it was just annoying and they wanted it seemed like there there was a lot of filler in it oh yeah for the stuff that they could have cut out they probably would have had I mean how many episodes was it initially like eight or something like that uh, yeah we had how many episodes there were nine episodes. Nine episodes? So, I mean, all the shit that they really could have cut out that didn't matter probably would have been like six. Could like, even like four. the or four. <laughs> <laughs> even the backstory with the sisters, like, mm, that only really needed, you know. I do feel like, to, like in, get the, get the in, sense of it, but. I do feel yeah. like it, I, I appreciate the haunting series, but I will say that I do agree or at least feel like there's always this series has a, has a habit in its two seasons of having one episode that I feel like really delivers. And I would say in this season, it was the two sisters story. It's episode eight. Yeah. Right? Episode eight. And then in the Hill house, it was Nell's episode where yeah. she experiences that the, she's been haunting herself, the bent neck, neck lady episode five, which was really that the one, one creeped me out. That was a that that made me fall in love with this whole thing, you know. Yeah. And to be honest, I was almost like surprised that that was not the climax because that could have really been the climax of the whole story. Like you could have had all these hauntings lead all, all the way up, and then at the end, you would have blown me away. I think it blown everyone away because it did. Yeah. But if that had been the climax of like all this time, main hauntings, not everyone, but the main hauntings of the main character was her dying right. and i was just like oh yeah. my god but i mean as it was i was shocked when it was like in the first season i was like this is episode five there, what there's five more episodes what do they have to talk about we just they just I, and i do feel like it didn't live up to the rest of that story though it was good and better and a little more focused nothing lived up to that episode whereas in this season i feel like that episode of the sisters really stole the show for me it's interesting that you talk about how most of people probably how most people remember the last episode and carry that with them for mm -hmm. me it was definitely that episode that's what i think was the core story of this whole thing and that somebody's force of despair could like just pull in all the other ghosts and hold them there i thought that was fascinating so there are good things in this season. I, I think I like it better than you guys, but, but that's I, why it makes it so annoying because I yeah. think that at the core there there's some stories that could have been great and made this really enjoyable, but then they just like fucked it up with some annoying characters and throwing in a bunch of garbage that didn't need to be there. Right. Yeah. Hill, Hill House, I think, you know, kept it a little bit more moving the way it should be. focused yeah i feel like they didn't catch the right beat which is a similar thing in almost a similar way that uh american horror story the first season did too they mistake yeah. i feel like they put a mistake where the the daughter's reveal was the the reveal that was the big thing like yeah. anything else was fluff that was the shock awe moment and i do feel sometimes certain show creators especially with ghost stories they don't always seem to know what their like what their shock and awe moment is for the season like that's your season finale daughter finds out she's been dead the whole time there's clues the whole season but she didn't know it you didn't know it there it is and that's like whoa and then this it was like i don't know i mean i feel like they both they they kind of missed the boat on what the real where the real focus could lie yeah uh, and I just think, and I think they want to just drag shit out as long as they can to keep people watching. And it's like, yeah, yeah I mean, nine episodes, it's not that long, you know, whatever. But still, it's like, it honestly felt <laughs> like it was like 13 episodes. You're like, I felt every I'm one totally. of those. And then eight was right. the best one. And it got me kind of psyched being like, all right, we're getting somewhere. This is kind of an interesting story. Where is it going to go? And then the finale happened. And I was like, <coughs> throwing papers in the air like jesus what are you doing yeah, right? <laughs> like, they, they could have cut just, out 
You just got to be interested. Now you fucked it all up. They 100% could have cut out. I'm saying 100% a lot this episode. I've been listening to uh, Bert Kreischer too much. 100%. 100%. <laughs> 100%. Um, do you? 100%. But they could have cut out the whole creepy ghost succubus couple. They could have cut that whole thing yeah. out. And oh, the whole like just... random like, oh, we're going to grow old together and own a flower shop and like, you know, all this oh like Oh my God. Shit. That was just like, Ugh. right it, so and it was like one of the, <laughs> like it was one it step turned off into a life. lifetime movie <laughs> it kind of it did kind of change a beat i'll say that it, it, it did it was one, i didn't mind it as much as you guys but it did change a beat no, it was one beat away from being like so stereotypical like oh these two mm-hmm. old lesbian witches they own a wit they own a crystal shop like you yeah. know what i mean it was like oh, totally oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. Because that's what all lesbians do, you know, obviously. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get a flower shop and that's going to be our thing. And mm-hmm. we're going to be the, the the partners that run a flower. You know what I mean? I just yeah. I was like, what the fuck? No, that's what I mean. It was like, I felt like it was almost yes. insulting where they went with some of the stuff. Like, I thought it was that's, interesting. That's where you went. I thought it was interesting that they decided that that's how that's going to be the beat is that the tragic story of, of Danny you know allowing herself to be possessed and eventually it wearing her down to the point that she she goes back and now i guess there's no hauntings there i i don't yeah, know there was a little bit of a the thing that's the thing that's so fucking dumb is like after she's the lady of the lake there was never another soul trap there again i would have given them so much more respect if it was like no she's fucking pissed she just like left her lover <laughs> like <laughs> started right over now, now she's gonna over. get really weird yeah mm-hmm. it was super but, cheesy she's just, Instead, she's just at peace and walks into the lake. To Honestly, her. I think that is a totally a missed opportunity because though they were trying to show a tragic ending, they just showed a tragic ending to a love story. As you want a tragic ending for a ghost story, right. it means that everything right. that Danny sacrificed to try and save those kids saved the kids and released the ghosts, but eventually it started right over. It was too big, too much. And now she got pulled into it and she haunts that place. And that would have been, and, and you could have yeah. said that you could have shown that that was, there was that, that sort well, of. I, I think her significant other should have been in Bly Manor in that end scene. Like the fact that she's in this fucking apartment and leaves the door open, like that's her welcoming her in is bullshit. Like if she knew she went back to the lake, like, and she was so distraught, why wouldn't she go back knowing the other lady of the lake, like walk the halls? Right. Yeah, I don't think they actually. To knew be like either. taken There's by like- her. They're just like, oh, we're just going to do this and whatever. Like, that would have been more romantic. Like, yeah, I mean, let you reason. kill me or whatever, or come see me or whatever the fuck happens. I mean, the question something. would be, would she have been the new lady of the lake or would the lady of lake be there and she would just be prisoner there? That would be interesting. Either way, it would be interesting. You know, if Instead she of her walks scene in an now, apartment, leaving the door open. Like, right. Because it should have ended. Yeah. It should have ended in the, in the manor. Yeah, in the haunted totally. house. Like that's where it should have and it shouldn't have gone anywhere else after that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. I think I that think the, Viola Willoughby Lloyd, heiress of the original owner of Bly Manor, Kate Siegel, who I really like too. I liked her in the mm-hmm. first move first season. But I, I do think like because they talk about how she lost her so, self of source of identity over the years, she just faded away, so there's nothing left. She was faceless. Right that if that lady started wandering Bly Manor and it was actually Danny because she just basically merged with her. So it really didn't stop anything. It just made it worse. And maybe it's the worst. And I I do agree that would have been far more haunting and hat. And yes, there is even a good point. But if she allowed herself to be taken and killed, uh, you wouldn't have the narrator of the story in the way that they they chose to, which I I which actually didn't liked. need to happen. Oh yeah. come on, the wedding. I don't really? like the wedding. I don't like the wedding. I thought yeah. that was pointless, <laughs> but I did like the deliberately changing and hiding of details. Uh, that it was kind of fuzzy, and that the audience for the story was the st- the people in the story, and so you realize you don't really have all the truth. Like I do like that kind of verbal. It's verbal Kent, unusual suspects aspect, but I think it could have been delivered by someone else. And I do think that could have allowed for that particular character to be killed uh, at the Bly Manor by her own haunting lover and then making it tragic. Because I do think you could have had Henry 
James's character. You could have had tell the story. You could have had actually probably even more accurately. Um, what's his name? The cook. The cook could have told that story. Um, I just thought the whole love story in general was pointless to the fucking story. Like to the rest of the story, I'm like, I don't. It did feel a little anything. tacked on. I mean, it's the whole like she was abused by her ex, and now she finds love. Full circle bullshit, and then tragically dies. It's just uh, like yeah. I said, the whole thing is just cheap to me. It's like I don't know. I feel like they just threw away something that could have been really smart. They ruined it by putting too much shit into it. There's yeah. something there. They should have kept <laughs> it a little more, a little more simple, and it would have been way better. But again, they yeah. were, we know what they were doing, and I'm sure there's people out there like, oh my god, I love that part. That's the part that really, it really hit me, it really touched me. You know, like which is fine or oh, whatever. Totally. But you know, yeah, well, I didn't it, keep that it shit. Me more, keep that shit out of my yeah. horror yeah. stuff. No, exactly. It bothered me more afterwards watching people I knew write about that, you know, who never watch horror stuff. They're like, that was just beautiful and amazing. And I'm so excited for the next season. Blah, blah, blah. Do you think like, that's what needs really? to happen? Because it was a pile of shit. Do you think that's kind of the stuff that needs to happen to appeal to a wider audience? Like we can't get away with pure horror to a wider audience. They kind of check it out. Do you know I mean? Do you think that's I, part of it? There's plenty I of crossover that. stuff that I love. And, you know, horror isn't something that's in a tiny box. It can be all kinds of stuff. There's, you know, I mean, especially like implied horror, it could literally be a dramatic right. art film, but t- scare the shit out of you. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> like to me, Hill House scared the shit out of me or it, it got me, but it was again, because like I could, something about it. Oh, my dogs are going crazy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we got snowstorm right now but like i get sleep paralysis so that triggered that like immediately when i was watching that i was like yeah i know exactly what this feels like and so that freaked me out more so i mean horror is whatever you want it to be what scares me might not scare you or what you think is gross you know i think too many people think horror is just like blood blood and gore Right. When it's not, right. yeah. so there's plenty of crossover stuff that has hit mainstream. But no, I don't think, I don't think you should take something that could potentially be a really well written story and then sprinkle in a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of this, just so any single person that watches it can, you know, relate to it. It it definitely, like you said before, Don. It it seemed like add-ons. Like they're like, all right, we got this, we got this no. structure right here, and we have it built. And we, you know, but you know what? Let's put let's put a window here that really doesn't need to be here. Let's add this there, you know, and it'll mm-hmm. it'll make these people happy if we try and resell it. Like, you know what I mean? It's like that kind of thing to just grab a different audience and suck them in. Yeah. And I don't know. It it, it seemed like it was an extra thought, an afterthought of like, oh, okay, we'll go back, cut a few things in here, and uh, you know, add this on and the last episode where you think it should be the last episode we're gonna do another episode and just drag it out and make it about something that you know yeah. the, the whole the whole fucking seven episodes of it really you know had nothing to do with with it with well, what happened true. at the end and it's like yeah you're like what do and you it wasn't do? even a, it wasn't even a slow burn either it was just like no it seemed slow. pointless once you got to that no. And then, yeah, episode eight got me excited, and episode nine made me want to smash my TV. A slow burn would be right. like well, hereditary no. or the witch, like those right. are slow burns. Like, whether yeah. you know, it's like this was this was more like a it was I mean, a bunch Ubli- of just shit. Yeah, Oubliette said it perfect when it started to happen. My thought was, Oh, I see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, I that- it wasn't like, Oh, it was, I wasn't fooled, I wasn't like. Oh my god! And there was no. It was just like, oh, no, it was like very superficial. Well, I think in some ways that might have helped it appeal to. I mean, it was a pretty successful. um, I mean, Netflix doesn't release their numbers, but by all accounts, it seems like it was very successful. Though they have said, uh, sure, (laughs) as of December 2020, they have said that there's no plans for any more chapters of the series, but they would they would let people know if things change. But as of right now, this is it. I mean, the problem. Oh man, the problem is nowadays 
people are people have always been narcissistic and speaking as a narcissist i can say this people just <laughs> want to see shit that like you know that makes them feel like oh like you always want to have stuff in a movie that people can relate to but people really want it to be like all about them now yeah and you can you can tell how directors will put shit in or writers or whatever put stuff in that'll just focus on like okay we're gonna play to the narcissism of people and how they're like oh my god yes yes that's it's so empowering and oh oh and like okay there's a way to do it which you can make a story out of it but don't make an entire story that really doesn't have anything to do with this one left field topic that you're going to put in there but uh to me it's insulting when when things do that i'm just like yeah okay it, it's part of it's part of my issue with uh I mean, we all we all love boobs and sex and stuff like that. But honestly, I don't necessarily need to see that in a lot of horror movies. Like, if it if it has something to do with the story, but if it's just like a gratuitous thing, like oh, unless it's like a you know trauma film or something fucking campy, and it's like that's what yeah. it is. Well, but I think like the like, eighties oh. slashers totally. Right, you know, in which I, you know. I love a lot of them, and I, I understand if a film is, that's what it's going for. That's what, that's what I'm expecting or whatever, but, if, you know, if it's just like, like fucking American Horror Story, they would always just put some weird, random, yeah. sexual yeah. scene in there, and I'm like, why the fuck is this even in here? It, has no, it means nothing to what you're saying. It's just in here to be fucking weird and like, look how edgy oh, we are. it's just stupid. The the season cult nothing has enraged me more in my life of watching tons tons of really really shitty and really great stuff but american horror story cult like i actually wanted to physically remove my eyes was, from my skull was that the the hotel one which one was that no no we need no. to do an episode of american horror story we should just do a full episode on american horror cult story was the trumpy TV one season yeah, no, you're thinking of Hotel with Lady been... Gaga, that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, it came I, after that. I watched one episode. That first episode, I was like, nope, can't do it because this is, this is I actually didn't mind Hotel. I didn't mind Hotel. I mean, Hotel didn't do anything for me, but Colt, like, I mean, I already referenced the scene earlier. There is one episode and one thing that happens that there is no reason for that is the dumbest fucking thing that has ever been on TV. Yeah. And I can never hear the song that played in the background again without thinking of it. And fuck oh, them the for making that episode. U Ublia, would you want to join us for a American Horror Story episode where we just like, we hit all of it? We can hit all of it. I mean, that's a lot. That's I mean, a lot of American Horror Story. Yeah. But at the same time, they keep making the same mistakes over. That's like, true. <laughs> like, seriously, like, there are better ones. Like, I mean, you know, I have my. Every I think everyone has a favorite season, but even the favorite season has issues. Yeah, but then again, they played. They they felt like with the witch one worked. You know, Coven like, Coven is the best. Everyone one. fucking loves Stevie Nicks and this and that, and so they went back and revisited that because that's what all the fucking people wanted to watch on TV. Again, right. I thought it was cheap. But that was know. cheap. Yeah, when it returns, it's Apocalypse where they return to those characters, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that one. I I don't know. I have a love. I don't want to say love. I have oh, a okay, I have a cool. like hate relationship with American Horror Story. Uh, I don't know. We we, oh, we could do it because I pretty much have like a hate hate relationship with that series. So yeah, I'm down to shit all over that thing. E, I'm, you gotta watch Colt. Oh, I don't know. It, I, I know. I need to watch e. Colt too. I haven't watched Colt. I watched the oh, beginning. Of it? I watched the oh. beginning of Colt and I liked it. And then you told me how mad you got and i was like okay i'm not gonna prioritize this oh my god you have to watch it no just because of what they do there's actually it's one of the only ones i will say there is one episode that is a straight up horror cool episode but oh, it's cool. the episode i think right before or after it that has the scene that just should have never uh, it's just know. so <laughs> ugh, gross and it irks you and you just oh my god and I, you know, I've watched all the fucking like rape revenge and like over the top, you know, films that people are like, oh, you're, you're never going to want to go out right. by yourself again because you're going to get attacked or, you know, whatever. And 
the over the top almost like smut films but there is a scene in cult that you it's fucked up really? i just because it's so irky and gross and the 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 script <laughs> and what they say during the scene it's just it makes you want to i'm serious you'll never want to watch anything again so you watch, should see it watch me watch me watch this and watch it end up being like my favorite season and be like <laughs> oh my god it's fucking great so it I'm is like, kind of my it's favorite your fault. season. I'm so <laughs> fucked up though that it is kind of my favorite season just because I'm like, what the fuck were they thinking? But you, I want you to see, you guys both need to watch it because I, I want to make sure that you know the scene I'm talking about and I'm not just, it's just not me. But I think you do because I remember when I, I like posted something about it and then our mutual friend Lisa posted something like a yeah. minute later, like, I'm never going to listen to that song again. <laughs> I was like, seriously? Okay. Um, We're going to do an episode or maybe even more than one episode. Maybe we'll do like an episode where we do like season one, two, three, and four, and then we'll do an episode of five, six, seven. I don't know how many seasons it's had, but we should definitely talk about it's not, it's had nine seasons. So maybe we'll break it up so we can really tear into them. Cause I think this is worth it. And I think that, even uh Shotzi should be here on this because I know she's got opinions about a horror American horror story. So maybe sure. all four of us can go to town on this thing. Uh, but yeah, buddy. We should probably wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so that said, what is everybody's rating on this? What how we use uh Oubliette, we use cute little creepy zombie candy corns, uh one zero through five to come up with a rating that sums up how we feel about it. What would you say? How many zombie, cute, creepy zombie candy corns would you give this thing? Five is the max. Five is the max. Yeah. I would give it one and then the little tiny, like, white little tip of a second one. (laughs) One and a All one right. and a tenth, right? I like, like I like it. It's like I like it's it. Like a small third. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's one not a, total an shit, eight. but it's pretty shitty. It's just uh, if they would have not been dick bags and added a bunch of shit that shouldn't have been in there, it would have been more. But they had to go and you know, uh, yeah. I don't even want to talk about it. one and a tiny white tip. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about you? Eve? Just just the tip. Um, just the tip. <laughs> Yeah. So the haunting of bull the haunting of bullshit manner. Um uh, and this was tough. Cause there were things I did like about it. There were aspects that I'm like, that could have been great. I know that's why it's and hard, man. Makes me mad. I'd probably say like like a one and a half cute oh. little bullshit zombie candy corns. Oh, I will Ooh, say too, one and a half. it's up, it's up for one of the yeah. Fangoria awards too. And if it fucking wins over Lovecraft Country or what we do in the shadows, or if anyone listening to this votes for Blind Manor and the Fangoria Awards, I'm gonna fucking find you, dude. I'll yeah. find you. Oh my god, we should talk about the Van. Man, we should put that in the news. We should have had a debate about that. Maybe that should be another episode because. I have opinions. Lovecraft Country better fucking win. And what we do in the shadows is fantastic. This, uh, this, what we do in the shadows, that's, that's a hard matchup for me. That's a hard one because both those shows are quality. Those are good, good shows. Mm-hmm. All right. So you're giving it, what's your final? What'd you say, E? You're giving it one and a, one and a half. One and a half. So a little bit higher than, than, like, I, w- I w- man, I want to give it two. He's just trying to like, seem nicer than I am. He is. I, I'm doing 1.75 now. <laughs> I'm raising it up. <laughs> That's it. You see, he's uh, trying to give you the, the title white of the and the show. orange now. Yeah, it just sucks because, like I said, I, I want to give it two because there were things in it that could have been good. That were those things in it that were great. Yes, but that's but why you shouldn't get, give it that much because they fucked up something good. So it should. That's that's what I'm saying. They, they fucked it up so much with putting in, and they put shit in there too early. Like uh, I'm going back. I'm going to zero. No candy corns. No candy corns. Them. Zero. Yeah. zero. <laughs> that, this this is them. the first zero we've. That ever is had. the first no zero. No candy. That, no, that, okay, if, then if, I'll if, stick with one in the tip. 
Okay, one of the two. <laughs> Just the Begrudgingly. two. Begrudgingly. Begrudgingly. Yeah, one. we haven't had a zero yet. That's interesting. I wonder why we haven't had a zero yet. I should have given. There's a couple yeah. things I could think of that. Oh, I could. I could, I could suggest oh. some that I think we get zero. <laughs> <laughs> um. Do yeah. we know what shot so, yeah, she gave it? One and a half. I did not. I only. I don't think she watched it. Actually, I. I don't believe she did because I asked her about it a little while ago. And she was like, eh. she had not watched it. Okay. Well, I, I think so. I'll give could, it. Could change all of it. I think I will give it. I'll probably give it a two. What? You like it. Don't try to come yeah, over to this side. Half. You guys kind of convinced <laughs> no. me. I was going to give it a three. No, fully. I was going to give Fear it a pressure. three. Peer pressure. But you guys come, have come to the strong, dark side, Dom. No, I strongly was coming <laughs> into this like with a, a firm, solid three. But because uh, I thought it was well done, there was some good parts. But there, but but there was a, a couple issues, and I fully expected to come into this mm. argument <laughs> and stand my ground against you two on that this was actually pretty good. But you kind of convinced me because there are a lot of extra elements that didn't need to be in there and it kind of choked it up. And though I don't mind the love story that you guys really don't like tacked on, I do, and I don't mind a romantic event to a uh, horror story, but our discussion- love story, but it needed to end differently. Yeah, specifically when we discussed the the ending. Uh, specifically when we discussed the ending and how it ended, I do feel like that was a missed opportunity. I would probably, I'm going to split the difference and say 2.5 candy corns because I think it's overall a slick looking series. I like some of the performances. There are some interesting elements in it, but it is ultimately too much in a, in a, it, it's, it is 15 pounds of sand in a 10 pound bag. And I feel good about bringing you down. Yeah, you did. You guys brought me down half yeah. a point. I will say, yeah. you, I thought I was going to be you, like, no. and then you kind of made me go, yes. oh, maybe you got a point because it, it, it is. I, I'm not as hard on it as you guys. And I would probably recommend it to if I knew a horror fan that had a significant other guy or girl who they wanted to introduce them to something. I was like, probably give them this as something on training wheels, but I'd probably I'd tell them pick season one and watch that one instead. So, I mean, again, look, thinking about that, like it brings me down a half point. So congratulations, you guys, you guys made me, you convinced me that I should back up a little bit from this one. So you, you got that right, Dominic. We brought you down, baby. We brought <laughs> All right. you down. Smart man. Brought you way down, baby. Thank you everybody for listening to this latest episode of Monster Candy Podcast. We're really happy to have Oubliette on the show for the first time. Hopefully not the Oubliette. last. Oubliette. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you will do this more often. It is always great to have you. Uh, yes, around. thank you for coming on. You're welcome. It was enjoyable. Yeah. So that's it. We should this... do. We we should do um, American Horror Story, and we need to do Motel Hell because there's some shit I want to say about that too. All right. So yeah, it's a classic, and Dom hasn't seen it in like forever. Yeah, forever. Well, nobody so... has. I haven't either. But dude, I still love it. I have we'll it. Put on the list. I have it. If you want to. If you want to borrow it, there you go. So, I think yeah. okay, so we definitely have a new Liet back 100%. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. We will catch you next time. This is Monster Candy Cod- Podcast. Dominic, <laughs> Screaming E, Oubliette, yeah. Shotzi, wrestling somewhere. Woo-hoo. She says it for us. We'll see you next time. Eat a sandwich. I don't know which Eat one to say. I don't know which one to say for, for, for Blind Manor. Suck on some water. I don't know. I got that. You've been listening to Monster Candy Podcast. Want to find out more about the show? Find us on the web at monstercandypodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching Monster Candy Podcast. And you can find our Twitter at monstercndypc. Hey, we couldn't fit the whole name. What do you want from us? Let us know what you think of the show and if we're right or if we're wrong or what you want us to tackle next. We want to hear from you. Well, Shotzi and I do, but I can promise that E doesn't really care. To find out more about Shotzi Blackheart and her professional wrestling, follow her Twitter at Shotzi Black or her Instagram at Shotzi Blackheart. You can follow Scream and E's band, The Memphis Murder Men, on Facebook at TMMM official page or his Instagram at Scream and E. That's screaming with no G, add the E. 
For me, Dominic Davy, you can find my artwork at DominicDavy.com, my band Tsunami Bomb at TsunamiBomb.net, and you can hear my other podcast, Three Gigs, at 3gigspodcast.com, or on the same platform you're hearing this podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Monster Candy Podcast. Suck my peanuts. <laughs>